Hey everybody, it's me Doc here from the unofficial Apple Weblog, also known as Tua, and today I'm going to show you how to install an SSD into a 2012 Unibody MacBook Pro. Now, this will work for just about any MacBook or MacBook Pro, but today we're just going to work on this specific Unibody build because it's mine. The drive I selected is a Samsung 840 Pro. Now this won't be your cheapest SSD, but it is one of the fastest. And the reason why I went for the Pro model instead of the standard Samsung 840 is because this one will do roughly about 550 reads and 520 writes, which means that it will read and write really, really fast. And since I am a video guy, hence the video, uh, this works better for me. Now the standard issue version of this will read at about 512 but only write at about 240 to 250. So that's still great for your average user but as a, a pro apps user I thought this was the way to go. Now what does the current SSD cost? This one will run you roughly around $250. You'll find it cheaper from here to there. I was lucky I got it a little bit cheaper than on Amazon. I believe that I paid about $230 for this. And for the non-professional version, you will find it ranging anywhere from about $159 to $170 on your Amazon or your Newegg or some other places. Another great quality drive company to check out is OWC, which is Mac Sales, because those are pretty much guaranteed to work with any Mac. With some some of the other SSD brands, not the Samsung, you have to be careful because your Mac may or may not recognize it. I do know the Samsung works because the one I'm taking out of this MacBook Pro is a Samsung and the one I'm putting back in is a Samsung, just bigger and faster. So anyway, let me show you how this is done. The first step is I'm going to want to clone my internal drive to the brand new drive to make sure that everything is exactly the way I have it. This will take over all data photos, music, applications, settings, the whole night. It will basically look exactly as it does now, just with more free space in the end. Now the best way to do that is a couple different drive dock mechanisms. Normally to do this, I use an application like Dolly Drive, Super Duper, or Carbon Copy Cloner. I'm gonna show you how to start with a drive dock. First option is something like this Seagate Free Agent, which is really cool about this drive is the back pops off and it gives you a serial ATA to USB 3 connector that you can just connect to your computer. It also backwards compatibility with USB 2 so that totally works. The other option also from Seagate this is a Thunderbolt sled there you go now we're in focus this Thunderbolt sled will allow me to use my Thunderbolt port and cable connected to my Mac put the SSD here and just basically clone the contents from the internal drive to the new SSD just again using carbon copy cloner, dolly drive or super duper. Now those are two of the easiest ways to do this. If you don't have these available you can pick up a plain drive dock like this for roughly about twenty to thirty dollars from Best Buy, Amazon, Newegg, a bunch of places. That's probably going to be your best option because it just saves you time. Otherwise, you have to clone all of the information to an external drive as a DMG file or a disk image or partition it like I showed you in a video a few weeks ago and clone it all there, then install the internal, set up the operating system and attempt to clone it back. It's going to take too long, so the best way to do it when you get a new drive is ask for a drive cloning kit. And again, if you order through OWC or Newegg, they're very inexpensive, anywhere between say $20 to $30 to find something like that. So first, let me clone the drive and then we'll go ahead and install it. In order to start the cloning process, I'm going to take this SSD drive and connect it to this dock connector. Now you'll see the SATA port, there's the SATA port, and you literally just line them up and push it on. That's about it. This drive is so light that you notice that it floats. A normal hard drive will sort of bend down and touch, but just be careful, don't mess with it too much. Take the Thunderbolt cable and place it in the back and it shall mount on my computer. Now let's start cloning. Now the first step is going to be to plug your SSD into your computer. In this case, I am using a Thunderbolt cable. You may be using USB. Next, I want to launch Disk Utility. And with Disk Utility, you want to select the beginning drive you'll see this case is named 256.06 Samsung SSD I'm gonna press partition and I'm gonna tell it that I would like it to make one partition in this case I will name it SSD for short we'll fix it later 
It's very important that you click on options after here and be sure that you have GUID partition table selected. If you do not, on an Intel-based Mac, you will not be able to boot up. So once that happens, I want to go ahead and press apply and go ahead and tell it to partition. Now this should only take a couple of seconds. And as you see that time machine pops out, asked me if I would like to use this for my time machine backup. And I'm going to say, no, don't use actually. I never use time machine. I use other backup utilities. And from here I can quit disk utility. Now, initially I stated I was going to use Dolly drive to do this, but I think I want to try to do this with carbon copy cloner and I'll show you why. So here I want to select my source. In this case, it's my master drive name after Daenerys Stormborn Targaryen, Mother of Dragons. Now I'm going to select my destination and I'm going to select SSD. And right now there's nothing on the drive, so I don't really have to pay attention to handling this information that's on the drive. So I'm going to go ahead and press clone. And here's what I wanted to show you, and this is why I selected Carbon Copy Cloner. It's going to notice that right now, as my primary disk, it does not have a recovery partition that comes with Lion and Mountain Lion. So it's going to give me the opportunity to fix it. Now, this is not necessarily important, but if you decide to skip over the recovery partition, which is only roughly a gig, say on a smaller drive, you're going to want to have a USB stick that you can use for recovery of some sort. In this particular case, since the drive is large enough, I'm going to press this open disk center. And it's going to ask me if I would like to go ahead and create a recovery partition now. And it explains to you why you would want to do that. Now I'm going to make sure I have it selected for mountain line. In this case, that's all it sees. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes. It asked me for the password. Let me just allow that to happen. What it's going to do is temporarily resize the volume, create a recovery partition, and copy over the necessary things. Now you'll notice as this is happening on an SSD, it's pretty fast. So once that is done, I can go ahead and close this and again, select my destination, which says SSD. And now I can say clone and it's going to start. Now it's going to take a minute to calculate to see how long this will take, but I will gather going from 128 gigabyte Samsung 840 regular to a 256 gigabyte Samsung 840 Pro, this should be relatively fast. But rather than sit here and watching paint dry, I'll just skip to the end of this and show you what to do next. See you in a few. All right, there you can see that my clone took approximately 16 minutes and 39 seconds to move just under 100 gigs, which is relatively fast if you've ever done this. So all I need to do is go ahead and quit this and say OK. Now I'll close that window and open up a new Finder window and just take a look see. Looks like everything is there as it is on my regular drive. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to need to stop this recording and I'm going to attempt to boot off of it off of the external while it's connected. That way I get a good idea if everything is exactly like I left it. Now, I'm pretty confident this is correct, but before I bother opening the machine and installing in the new drive, let me boot from this just to be sure everything is perfect. Be back in a second. Okay, so I was able to successfully clone the drive and I am currently booted and mounted off of this external. Now all I need to do is place this in the machine.
There you have it folks, the MacBook Pro is now fully assembled and let's take a look at the new SSD. First thing we'll do is open up the Blackmagic disk speed test and see how fast it is. You see that the write speeds are popping in at about 486, 485 and in a second it will go and take off and show us the read speeds. And the read speeds are clocking in at about 515. That my friends is really, really fast. The stock standard issue platin based drive, I mean your standard issue drive, would normally come in at about 25 by 50 or so. And the older SSD I had in there would clock at about 250 by about 400. And this guy can pretty much do 500 by 500. You'll see that it goes up and down and that just really depends on all the other things I have here running at the top. But normally when I'm in video mode, I turn everything off and just run Final Cut. So I would definitely give this drive two thumbs up in a Z formation. Once again, that's the Samsung 840 Pro 256 gigabyte SSD. It is also available in a 128 and a 512. I picked this guy up at Amazon, but you can find it just about anywhere. So I hope you enjoyed this. Once again, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please send them to me at doc at tuaw.com. Once again, that's doc at tuaw.com. Don't forget to press the subscribe button, press the like button, and share this with your friends. We'll see you again soon. To Aloha. Holy crap, look at that guy speed up. That's amazing.